This is a blog about human, Martian, extraterrestrials. Now, did you know that in the year 2023, there's actually a company here on Earth that is planning to set up a human colony on the planet Mars? It's true. There's a nonprofit organization called Mars One that has plans on establishing the first human, Martian, extraterrestrial colony on the planet Mars. They're taking applications from the public the first two weeks of them announcing the opportunity for people to become the first human Martian colonists. They receive 78,000 applicants. In order to apply for the opportunity, all you have to do is just be 18 years of age and submit a one minute video explaining your motivation behind why you would like to become, you know, a human Martian extraterrestrial colonists. They're planning to leave Earth in the year 2022 and it's going to take about a year to travel from Earth to Mars and they're going to be landing on Mars in the year 2023 to set up the first human Martian extraterrestrial colony. This is a very interesting day and time we're living in. This opportunity brings up so many things to mind. Um, one of the first things that came to mind uh, when I went on the website, I looked through about 400 of the videos that they have on their website because everyone who applies to become the first human Martian extraterrestrial colonist, everyone who applies, you know, you can see the video on the website. I looked through about 400 of the videos and I only saw about seven people that, you know, you would consider black or of African descent or Moorish, etc. And so, you know, there's a deficiency in the number of people of color applying for this opportunity. So I think, you know, in, in order for us to be able to say, you know, there was a black person who was amongst the first settlers on Mars, you know, our people need to participate or at least apply to participate in the opportunity. Another thing that comes to mind is that, you know, within our lifetime, we may actually witness the birth of the first human being on another planet. You know, when those human Martian colonists uh, go to Mars and set up that colony, you know, there's a strong possibility that in time a baby will be born on Mars. You know, another deficiency I saw in the applicants was that there weren't many women who applied. So, you know, in order for there to be a baby born on Mars, there are going to have to be some women who participate in the program. They're actually also planning to do like a reality TV show <laughs> of these people living on Mars. That's going to be crazy. But you know what I mean? These, this is the day and time we're living in. You know, we're living in a very interesting day of time. So many things come to mind when I think about this program and this opportunity. One of the first things that come to mind, you know, I've been in many debates with Moorish friends of mine or people who prescribe to the uh, Moorish doctrine. And, you know, one of their arguments to me is that, you know, because I consider myself Afrocentric, they feel as if I limit myself, you know, by focusing on the continent of Africa and they say well why don't you focus on the rest of the earth well we're actually living in a day and time where now the argument can be made that why just focus on earth when you can focus on the rest of the solar system because we're actually living in a day and time where we will witness the colonization of another planet by human beings in the form of those human Martian extraterrestrial colonists maybe in time human beings may colonize Titan Titan is a moon of the planet Saturn and you know there's a there's some possibility that human beings may settle that moon in due time so no longer can we merely call ourselves Afrocentric. You know what I mean? I want to coin a new term and call it Astrocentric. Astro coming from the word astronomical. You know, we're no longer just merely Afro-Americans. We're now Astro-Americans. You know, we have to have an astro-futuristic consciousness. We can no longer just be focused on the planet Earth. We're living in a day and time where we have to be not only concerned with the things taking place on our planet, but things taking place throughout the solar system and throughout the galaxy. This is a reality now. Another thing that came to mind, you know, there's this uh, terminology that we hear a lot. It's called white flight. And it's basically dealing with there's this phenomenon that occurs that, you know, when a lot of uh, people of color move into an area that was previously predominantly white, you know, the white people began to move out of that area into further and farther locations, you know, in, in the metropolitan area. You know, we, we witness this all over the place. And so, you know, maybe the colonization of Mars is, is white flight to another level. You know, they, they, they actually fly into another planet. You know what I mean? But another thing that comes to mind when, with the conversation of white flight in the form of, you know, the human Martian colonization is the concept of gentrification. You know, after white flight comes gentrification. You know, gentrification is when, you know, the, the property value in the urban areas begin to drop. And then all those white people who moved out of those urban areas, they buy up the property and they, quote unquote, gentrify it. You know, they transform the liquor stores into like flower boutiques and things of that nature. And then they start moving back in. Now, I mean, let's take this to the astronomical level. You know what I mean? They go colonize Mars. They build up Mars. You know, then now you're going to have people of color want to go live on Mars. We're going to go live on Mars. And then they're going to come back. It's no longer is it gentrification in the city level. It's gent they gentrify the planet. 
I'm really just blogging and blogging and, you know, thinking of different concepts. But gentrification Earth, that's a whole movie concept. You can, we can create a whole movie about the gentrification of planet Earth. Another thing that comes to mind is how will human beings who live on Mars be affected by the Martian climate? You know, we already know that, you know, as people travel further from the equator here on Earth, the melanin content within their skin begins to decrease because they're not getting so much of the solar radiation. And so, you know, human beings living further away from the sun on the planet Mars may become even paler, you know what I mean, because they're getting even less solar radiation. So, you know, I mean, in time, those human Martian colonists, you know, they may their, their skin complexion may become paler or it may even become another color. You know, these are things to think about that, you know, we may not witness that that transformation in our lifetime, but, you know, maybe our children or our children's children, you know, down the line, if that human Martian co uh, colony is successful and it has some longevity in due time, those people may begin to transform and become some other type of being, some new type of being. Another thing that comes to mind, the uh, gravity on Mars is uh, much less than Earth. It's almost a third of the gravity on Earth. And so I don't, I don't know if anyone ever saw that movie called John Carter of Mars, but, you know, those human Martian colonists, they'll be jumping all over Mars with, you know, they'll be leaping, <laughs> leaping tall buildings in a single bound. You know what I mean? Like they put things in science fiction movies like John Carter and Superman for a reason, because, you know, there's some relevance to it. You know what I mean? If, if a human being, it would go to Mars. The human being's ability on Mars would be magnified because our gravity is is higher. We have a higher gravity here. So on Mars, because there's less gravity, we're, we would be seem stronger on Mars. Um, another thing that may happen over time is that the humans living on Mars may grow bigger because, again, the gravity on Mars is less than that of Earth. And so because there's less gravity, you know, the, hu the human being's body may be, be able to grow taller and bigger. So now you're talking about paler creatures who are larger in size that may you know that may be the next evolutionary step for those human beings who live on mars you know the last thing that comes to mind about this whole human martian colonist um opportunity that's coming up is that the timing system on mars mars actually has two tiny moons called phobos and demios uh, so there's two mo moons on Mars and the orbital period of Mars is roughly twice that of Earth. So, you know, the time it takes for Earth to make one complete rotation around the sun, it takes Mars twice as long. So you have two moons and you have a twice as long orbital period. So now the, the human Martian calendar will be very different from the, the human Earthling calendar. You follow what I'm saying? Because I have a video on my YouTube channel called Extraterrestrial Calendars. You have months within your calendar because of the moon. So if you're living on a planet with two moons, you'll have twice as many months. Now, not only will the human Martian calendar have twice as many months, but because its orbital period is twice as long as compared to Earth, you have twice as many months and you'll have twice as many days roughly in the human Martian calendar. So it'll be very different. So I think about, you know, how we have like some places like in airports, you see like uh, the time for London the time for Beijing, the time for L.A. and New York on like, you know, several different clocks. Well, in 2023 and beyond, you may actually start seeing a clock that has you know, the Martian time and the Martian date, you know, the human Martian time and the human Martian date. But I mean, it's a very interesting day and time we're living in. I like to encourage people of African descent to participate in this opportunity so that we can say, you know, we had a, a, one of the first human Martian colonists was, in fact, of African descent. Oh, another thing that comes to mind, you know what happened the last Last time these people colonized something. The last time these people colonized something, it wasn't long after their colonization of that place where, you know, this, a slave trade or some semblance of a slave trade took place. And so, you know, you talk about gentrification Earth. You know, Earth may become a planet that is used, you know, to obtain slaves. You know, it's now we have history repeating itself on an astronomical level. Again, I'm just blogging different ideas that came to mind when I heard about this uh, human Martian extraterrestrial opportunity that's taking place. But we're living in a very interesting day and time. I wouldn't be surprised if any or all of the concepts that I discuss actually get portrayed in a sci-fi movie. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see actually see some of these things take place within our lifetime, in particular, the birth of, the, of a human Martian, a human being on the planet Mars. You know, we're living in a day and time where we're actually going to see evidence and unless the greys and the reptilians make themselves known, we live in a day and time where we're actually going to see evidence of the first extraterrestrials in the form of those human.